But overall, it was a great night. Had a lot of fun. Um, so happy to hear people kind of had a good time too. A lot of people come and congratulate me saying I did really well, which again, you don't really look for these kind of things. That's something that you're kind of looking for, but it's always good to get some sort of positive affirmation. And just, it was quite gnarly, man. I'm just saying again, really gnarly to kind of be in Wilson again, but on my own terms, right? Like back again, not underneath any cool guy uh, kind of bandana, not under any what figuratively and uh, actually like, you know, if it's like bandana kind of vibe, just being myself, being a good DJ, going there under merit, no kind of bringing, no kind of cosign, just like someone that liked me before at another bar say, hey, come play here. I manage this bar now. No sucking anyone's dick. Just like, just pure, just on just a skill alone. And that's amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that over time I'll be able to introduce some some other some newer sounds to my set, and I would hopefully be able to craft my own little space and be able to show that yeah, I'm as good as all the other people that are DJing in that scene because I think I am better or as good as some of the people that have been playing there for ages and ages. But again, I took a lot of time. I took time away. I stepped away from the scene. I wasn't really involved. So by you know, if they are going a bit further than I am in terms of career and they get into better places or whatever it may be, that's all good, no problem. I'm just going to keep working, put my head down and work and work, 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 work. But um, it's interesting to see how much better I've got since playing at Tapis, right? Because on paper, Tapis, again, is one of those locations where no one really want to play. It's a kind of a weird crowd. You have to kind of, you know, you, we've kind of earned our respect over time. But there is something to be said. There really is, it's probably stating the obvious, but there is something to be said for playing out every single weekend. You can't help but get better. There's no way that you cannot get better as a musician, as a performer, whatever it may be, playing every weekend. There's no way you cannot get better. And with DJing, it's that one of those weird professions where you can't play every day because bars and clubs don't really like to use every single day. For the most part, if you live in a busy city, maybe you could get away with playing at a, at a spot from Wednesday to Sunday. But for the most part, it's Thursday to Sunday. Um, and most people won't want to play these only Friday to Saturday. So it's difficult to get gigs in the first place because you know, London is you know one of the probably places where there's probably a load more DJs in London than there are bars that need DJs, um, especially with all the new licensing law things that are coming in. So it's hard to get spots, right? But it's only hard if you're looking at the places that are cool, right? So Dawson and Shoreditch, they're amazing, they're great. Uh, but there's too much competition there. There's too, there's too many people fighting for the same kind of, you know, crumbs, so uh, so to speak. Not to say the positions are crumbs, just to say, you know, there's two people in there fighting for the same positions. So the thing to do is to pull away from there and go to other places and try and get your, build your reputation up that way or try and hold your skills that way, right? It requires a lot more work. It probably requires you having to buy equipment because most of the places you're going to go to won't necessarily have a PA set up uh, that can kind of accommodate a DJ. So it's going to require a bit of investment on your side, maybe investment on the bar end side. You might have to do a proof of concept and kind of maybe do the first one for free. There's lots of things you can do approaches wise in terms of kind of getting involved, but that is probably the best way to do it. So they go to all the places that all the other DJs play at, go to another area that also has a big kind of like, you know, caches or bars and people that go out to have drinks and then set up a bar or set up a DJ booth in that kind of arena and then build yourself up that way. Of course, on the other end, you're going to get the exposure you probably want because I, I did notice in Dawson when I played in, in the, the other day, I did notice in the space of like an hour or two, I got I gave my number to three or four people who wanted me to play at their party or at their wedding or whatever, something maybe. So whether or not something envy comes of it is, is, is neither here or there. But the point is that you obviously get a lot more opportunity to impress people who might be able to put you in another position playing in Dawson because naturally all the people that you'd want to uh, help you out in your career quote unquote live in that kind of area right or they go out in that kind of area so that you can kind of lose that connection lose that ability to kind of play in front of the people that you want to play in front of because you're out of the area but if you're only concentrated about being a better DJ being a better performer you have to be able to go on stage. You just have to. There is no other excuse for it. Because I've noticed even for myself, like I probably recorded more mixes in my bedroom when I worked, when I was DJing in Dawson or when I wasn't DJing as often. Uh, but now I probably play out more often than I did record DJ, record my sets. And I'm a far better DJ. But I always used to think that, oh, now I'm improving because I'm playing at home. But you're not because you're playing for a crowd of low for a crowd of one right you're not getting the reception you're not getting that feedback loop you're not being able to see who's tapping their feet who's bobbing their heads who's leaving uh who's kind of like not dancing anymore you're not being able to read the crowd anymore you're not going to be able to get an, an understanding of what works when blah 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 and the only way to do that is to be on stage 
So um, I think for any aspiring DJ out there, if you are kind of in two minds or out to do, you're not sure, oh, I don't know what to do here or there, blah, blah, blah. I would encourage you. I would encourage you. I would encourage you, whatever you may do, wherever the crowd is going, or wherever it's so super populated in terms of DJs, don't go there. Go to another direction. Find another area, wherever city you live in, wherever town you live in, and try and set up shop there because obviously you'll be able to play more often. You might even get paid more often. But the most important thing is that you'll be able to play more often you have a captive audience that you can kind of build over weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And then slowly but surely, once you're improving your skills, you can then start recording your sets, sending them out to more bars and clubs. But regardless, use that as your main base and then build out from there. But don't don't aim for the stars first. Try and get your base. Try and get your spot that you can go to every single week to play. And that will improve you far quicker as a DJ than playing in front of a bunch of uh, cool people who necessarily won't, are only going to hire you once every three or four months, which isn't good enough in order to kind of get you where you need to get to. Uh, so that was my weekend for the most part. And again, like I said, I'm, I'm DJing again this Friday uh, at the Free Compasses in Dawson. The flyer's there if you guys want to see it. Uh, bump. Uh, with myself, handsome black man, at the free conferences on the 8th of February, 9 p.m. until 12 30.